All right, so hey, this is how we're going to um, do a assessment on B over here. She's got a complaint when she's doing an overhead pose in yoga. So showing the pose that we're dealing with. All right, so she's saying that she's feeling feeling some pull in her thoracic area right in the back over here, and then she also feels some little funkiness in this right hip. So we're gonna we're gonna try to differentiate between the left and the right. So all I had to do is reach up the arm. So reach up both arms, and just collapse this one. Okay, so she's still reaching. Tells me which one she has a pull on, which side you have a pull on. The right one. Okay, go ahead and switch again. Okay, and then reach as well. This is just feels wrong. <laughs> so we're getting more pull over here. Now she's getting pulled when she reaches her left, but she's also getting a, a, probably a irritating more when she pulls with the right, okay? So let's go ahead and determine if there's a weakness in that lap, okay? So then we're just gonna do it from a standing position, palm out, I'm gonna pull directly away, and that doesn't wanna stay there, okay? Then we're gonna look at this one, same thing, squeeze my arm in, I'm gonna pull away. There's a little resistance, but still not quite a bit, so bilateral lap weakness. Um, go ahead and grab a seat. We're tracing, then we're going to trace down a little bit. We're going to go through all the shoulders to determine if there's anything in the shoulder component, and there is right here in this anterior delt. So that means that we've got to look at pectoralis as well. So I'm going to push away. Pectoralis is not there. Let's compare that. We're going to do anterior delt. That's strong on her right. And then if we push away, pectoralis is strong on this side. Okay? But come over here with Brianna okay if we look down at the scapula this is level her serratus is nice and engaged and lats engaged and it's keeping everything on the rib cage but over here we have a little bit of a little bit of scapular winging right there okay so we're gonna look at some of the uh, serratus we're also gonna look at the lat and we're gonna try to determine if you can see how my finger can kind of duck underneath that versus this one can't really duck on earth. It's nice and flat on the scapula. This is the winged one. I don't know if you can get a view of it from down. Okay. All right, so some bilateral lat weakness usually is involving in the sort of thoracic rib area. Uh, we're in the thoracic uh, spinal area. So we're gonna look at that, mobilize that first. Then we're gonna recheck the lats, determine which one's gonna, uh, which one's gonna stay weak. Then we gotta look down at the pelvis. All right, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is th just uh, mobilize that thoracic root area, okay? Just a little bit of mobilization. Thoracic is doing pretty well with the anterior, uh, anterior to posterior to the placement. Now, go ahead and stand back up. All right, since we got that under control, let's see if there's an involvement there. So we're just gonna face her. All right, so hold this arm in. I'm gonna pull it away. That's stronger, okay. We're gonna go back over here. This is the one that we assume we had a little bit of an issue. Let's find out. One, two, three, lock firm. That one stayed weak. So this is our true weakness. This is the one that was just kind of playing ball with us because of the irritation in the thoracic spine. Go ahead and lean on your back. If you're, anytime that you're having a, anytime that you're having a lat weakness, we also gotta look at the pelvis because that's where it's anchoring. Check the legs, go ahead and put this knee up. So we're gonna check everything from rectus femoris down to glute max. Looking at psoas from a couple different angles. Um, then this knee. All right, so why we determine where we move. Um, if we've got a pectoral, pectoral uh, issue over here, we gotta look at the cross body. So we've gotta double check this psoas over here. I'm gonna do a couple angles. We also got lat. So with lat issue, it could be anywhere in the pelvis that's bothersome, okay? So at mid-range, the psoas felt nice and strong. We're gonna bring it up to end range, okay? We're gonna add pressure right here and straight down. And that's where she loses it, okay? We're gonna give her one more shot. One, two, three, hold firm. She loses it again. Give this one, okay? We're gonna compare, okay? Lock it. That is strong. One, two, three, we'll give her another shot. It gets even stronger, okay? Uh, a lot of times when you're testing, if you test a weak muscle, give it another shot. That could just be a, a momentary weakness. It'll get stronger with just the testing alone. A true weak muscle, okay, where it has a neurological impairment, will continue to get weaker 
and weaker, and it just gets weaker and weaker. Even though we're giving it more proprioceptive gain, it still doesn't catch up with the demands of the thoracic cord. All right, so let's look at glute medius as well. So we got right psoas, which is going to be an issue with that left pectoral because of the anterior oblique system. So now we got to look at the lateral system over here, okay? So we're going to look at the glute medius. We're going to bring it directly out. I'm going to push it right back into the other foot. It's not there. We're going to give it another shot. Does it get better or does it get worse? It gets worse. I'm going to give the left side. One, two, three. Lock it. It gets stronger. I'm giving another shot. It continues to get stronger. All right. Now we're going to look at the internals. Okay. So we're going to look at adductors. I'm going to pull it directly away. Nice and super solid. And here, nice and super solid. So we've got a issue with anterior hip with psoas. We've got another hip issue with glute medius. We're going to flip her over, find out if glute max is involved as well. All right, so let's just go right into it. Bend this right knee. You're gonna pick it right off the table. One, two, three, I'm gonna press down. Nice and super solid. She has good motion. Bend this knee, pick it right up in the air. Hold firm, nice and super solid. All right, so we're assuming that it's just glute medius as well as anterior hip with a psoas action. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna activate this. We're gonna adjust L3 and L4, get that figured out. Determine how the uh, lat is involved. They're going to do a little bit of manual therapy to get any type of uh, irritation out of that lat as well and to free of this root cage. All right. So we did a little uh, testing to determine where the adjustment needs to be placed. We're going to do a four over here. We're going to do a wedging, and she already moved just with a little bit of motion, but we still got to determine if that made any difference. Go ahead and lean right back. So that was specifically a four. We're going to look, and we'll push in the left knee. That is a much stronger one. One more time. That is a much, much stronger muscle. All right, now we're going to look at um, the psoas. All right, because we did L4, but I'm, my testing found out that's a little bit of fixations going in opposite directions on L3 and L4. Go ahead and face me on this one. So now we're going to get more into L3, okay? Was more of a wedge, so we're gonna find out. Hold this like that. up, all the way. One, two, three, lock, lock, lock. That is stronger. I'll give it one more shot. And it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. All right, so now we've got that under control. Now we're gonna retest the lat. Go ahead and stand on up. All right, so we're checking this right lat because this is the one that had the problem. Okay, so palm out, squeeze it in, one, two, three, hold it strong. That is a much stronger lat. Grab a seat, let's see what we got. Okay, so we still got a little bit, so we still got a little bit here. It's a little better, but I'm still gonna say there's a little bit of scapular winging here. So we need to, we need to go and do a little bit of treatment into the serratus and this lat, and, and if we can't get it solved today, well, of course, I'd charge a lot more money if we could solve everything in one visit, but uh, we're gonna work on some strengthening exercises to get the serratus under control, so she can bring that shoulder blade, that scapula onto a rib cage more effectively, okay? So, um, let's get to it. All right, so this is called the Venus heel. Um, has radio frequency as well as a uh, pulsing max on it. What it's going to do is we're going to heat up this tissue to approximately 105 Fahrenheit, uh, 41 degrees Celsius. And the reason for that is because that is the research that showed where we start getting some positive changes where the hyaluronic acid in the fascia starts to become less viscous. Uh, decreases viscosity um, and it allows for actual change to occur and a little bit of fascial deformation. Uh, one of the bigger complaints that a lot of people say is like, oh, the tissue has to reach 42 degrees Celsius to make change. Well, guess what? This is what makes the 42 degrees. Um, a deeper penetrating heat 
where you're getting the radio frequency, you're getting almost eight heads of ultrasound. This is where you're getting the penetrating heat. Um, then you're getting your pulse EMF, which is gonna get a little more perfusion of the blood. Um, once we get this tissue all through there, nice and hot, then we're gonna do a little bit of fascial scraping, a la gua sha, ISTM, grasping, whatever you wanna call it. And we're gonna try to get a little more mobility out of that tissue. So this is where we determine how hot it is. It's got our, a temperature sensor in there. So we're reaching 105, which is equivalent to that 42 degrees Celsius. So that's where the research is. We're gonna leave it. We've been doing this for about five minutes. Want to keep it at that 105 mark for a few more minutes, and then we're gonna do some scraping. So we're gonna do a little bit of fascial scraping here. A little bit of muscle scrapes. Okay. We're gonna hit those paraspinals first. I want to come into the ribs a little bit. Hmm. You can definitely feel them not right in that rhomboid and lower trap area. Feel a little denser tissue right near the, the spine, closer to the spine. So we're gonna put a little more focus right there. rotating through the hips and then as she walks backwards we're going to put an eccentric overload on it so we're really going to try to fire up that serratus and let's see what happens Now the overload happens when you go backwards because forwards, you use your momentum, a lot of abdominals, a lot of frontline work. When she goes backwards, she doesn't have that anymore. So it's having a hold stronger. Push away from it. Push further, push further. kick out a little bit okay so now we're going to do a, a little integration so now we're moving it through a step cycle I'm having her put a little more mental effort into this arm rather than the actual pulling we're going to focus on the pushing and we're going to a step all the way through engage into that rotation component good good all right let's switch sides Same thing. Now, I want her to focus on this external rotation of the shoulder. So this time, instead of focusing on the upper cut, upper cut portion, she's going to focus on this external rotation portion to see if we can get this to drive down through this area. Good. Don't let it go too far up. Just like a bazooka. There we go. 
up here. There you go, bend that, bend that left elbow a little bit. Brianna's saying that punching with the left hand side and externally rotating on this right hand side seems to be seems to be harder than the opposite. So this might be an involved with, with some external rotation issue versus just a serratus issue. So we're gonna do a little bit of external rotation and see if we can get that fired up and then we'll recheck it again and hope for the best. All right, so we're gonna start out with the external rotation. Um, we're gonna keep it close to the side. So, you know, doing a lot of Terry's minor and infinitus here, obviously, because those are the external rotation. But, um, we're gonna try to get her shoulder blades together first and let's see what happens. And the reason I've got her on this squat sponge is to put a little pressure in because we definitely get more activation out of Terry's minor when we do this. Um, so it's an important part of it. Oh, there we go. That's her fail point right there. And that's it. <laughs> so, we definitely learned. So it's sitting better, but whenever she corrects it just a little bit with a little bit of tension, that gets involvement. So just a little bit of attention from her handles it completely. But without her attention, it relaxes and it rolls forward. So doing the exercise was a whole nother assessment because we looked at it and saw that her muscular endurance with external rotation was not there. So that is definitely going to be our next focus is to strengthen that as external rotators and build up that endurance part of it, which definitely showed us what we need to do next. Okay. So, how do you feel? Good. <laughs> it feels a lot freer. I got more movement throughout. Good. Reach up nice and high. Good. Perfect. So, having more lat activation helped her a little bit. Um, opening up that thoracic, you know, with a couple different modalities helped a lot. And then we know where we're going as far as strength is concerned. Nice. Good. 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 Good.